Hello there again, folks. Welcome to episode six of Film Club. It is I, your host, Brad, and your other host, John Eric. How's it going, buddy? Hello, hello. It's going. It's going good. How are you? Good, man. Enjoying the summer. It's hot as hell here. I am i can't wait for fall. I just want it to be Halloween season, to be spooky season. The, the spooky lights will be going up probably middle of September. <laughs> I love Halloween and uh, just oh, yeah. fall in general. I, my blood temperature, my blood temperature just goes through the roof. I just sweat all day in the summertime. Like it's so hot and humid here that it makes me want to go hide inside and watch a movie. And that's what we're here to talk oh, about yeah. today. Or a horror movie. A horror, a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> and what horror movie do we have today? It is. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> part four. The Dream Master, 1988. I almost said the Dream Warrior. That would be wishful thinking, I think. They went from Dream Warriors to Dream Warrior. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that is, uh, you know, after, <clears throat> I think it's important to put it in context, people. This movie came out one, one year after, so the Dream Master comes out in 88. August 19, 1988. Um, good year. Zero is born. I always remember it for that Thank reason. You. I say, oh, it's this Nightmare on Elm Street. So we go back. Um, the 88 one, yeah. Yeah. What were, your, what were your brief thoughts on going back, watching this one now? I, I really, really, really did not like it. I mean, I... I would put part two ahead of this one now in my ranking because I just felt like it was such a wasted opportunity. Like, yeah, you're right. There was a huge turnaround just like with the first one and part two, there was a huge turnaround with this one, but I just feel like they just pumped out something really quick and yeah, just that's my, my initial thoughts is rewatching it. Now I just thought, ah, oh, God, what a wasted opportunity this was. Yeah. There's stuff there's stuff in this that I like. But there's just so much that I don't like and rewatching it I just thought at I, I had to watch this one in uh, two parts again, which is just a testament that for me, especially with a short movie, but part 3 like I remember remember when I rewatched it um a few like last month or a few a few weeks ago when I rewatched part 3, it was just like I was just like my mouth was like like a just excited face and I, I was so pumped to be watching it again whereas this one ugh, i was just watching it and just shaking my head being like oh god they're doing oh. this yeah yeah I and guess... again there are there are things in this that i will as we discuss it i will talk about the things that i do like the oh yeah kind small things but <laughs> it's not a it's not an entire uh shit sandwich or uh <clears throat> A shit pizza no, in this it's, case. It's not as bad as part six. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen part five, so I'm, I'm looking forward to my rewatch on part five. But I remember, I don't think it's as bad as part five even. But I mean, it just, it's such a wasted opportunity. That's why I would put it lower than part two, because at least with part two, yeah, they were pumping something out uh, a year later or whatever, like really quickly after the first one. But at least with part two, they tried something new. Whereas this one, it just, they just, they really, yeah, screwed the pooch. I I'm I'm pretty much in agreement with you. Um, I'll be honest. For the last few years, I've been um, a lot of the time putting these movies on just in the background, and just mm -hmm. kind of like. And Nightmare Four was kind of the one I go to a lot because it's a uh, it's fast paced. It it moves pretty quick. At least when, at least when it's in the background, I notice like to me at the end of yeah. this movie this time it, but. I will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, <laughs> funny because I had to watch part two in two parts and I had to watch this in two parts. The reason I watched, I had to watch two part two in two parts just because it was kind of slow and I fell asleep. This one, I just turned off because I, like it was getting late. I wasn't falling asleep, but I just said, you know what, I'm finishing this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It wasn't about it, it being boring or anything. It's definitely not boring um, or slow, but I just, I went to my, I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to finish this tomorrow. Yeah, and I kind of agree with something you said before we started recording here. 
was like, uh, you know, you have these nostalgic ideas or, you know, we'll talk about the first time we ever watched this movie. I have an interesting time, but um, when you watch them in this close proximity together, you really start mm-hmm. to notice to what some, you know, if you only saw the movie once when it came out and then you saw the sequel come out the following year, maybe you wouldn't be as keen to it. But yeah, have the absolutely re- have the returning characters, and you know, for the ones that do return and aren't recast, I like no Patricia Arquette. Um, and I think that's a big, big, big uh, weakness on part of this movie. And I yeah, I agreed. I hate to say it, but Tuesday night as as uh, Kristen, she's it's not a good actress compared to P- Patricia Arquette. Like you can just tell right away. It's a, it's almost like it's a new care, a new character. And it's just, yeah, she's just not very good. She's yeah. Not. And, um, it's not that, mm-hmm. um, like, I think she's like a terrible actress in general. It's just, I, there's no chemistry, like with part, no, with dream yeah. warriors, you can like even see like, there's a gel. It felt like it was a good, I don't want to say a good time on set because I know there's tension on all types of sets, right? But yeah, yeah, like in yeah. this movie, I think um, even Rodney Eastman, uh, Joey, and Ken Sagos, Kincaid, they talked about Patricia Arquette not coming back in uh, the Never Sleep Again documentary. It's like the Bible for all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, right. And they said, yeah, there was just like the vibe wasn't there when there's a scene where it's old friends meeting together after a long time or reunited. Yeah, and- well, and that's... It just yeah, doesn't, it doesn't thing, click. Too. The fact that it like came out a year after the Dream Wars, like that's like, that's, I imagine audiences would be like, oh, who's the new blonde girl? Like, cause it's only a year later you would, like, and the cast too, like Kincaid and, um, and Joey, like they, yeah, it just, they just don't have the chemistry anymore. And it's only, it's, it's only a year later. And then all of a sudden it's just this new girl. And so I'm like, oh, well, this kind of ruins the, you know, reunion style of like these survivors from part three. Now it's kind of ruined because it's just like, oh, they recast, uh, they recast Kristen. So it's, yeah. Yeah. It, that's a big. That's one of the neighbor, issues. One of the, one of the many, when I rewatched it, I just, yeah. Um, one of the many, uh, misfires for me. Yeah. Well, I agree. Um, let's talk about first time you watched the movie did you have better memories of this movie um i did like because i always i uh for the longest time i had only seen part one and new nightmare uh and then me and my brother uh we actually did the friday the 13th movies too and hellraiser we we re or sorry we watched all the uh sequels for the first time yeah and we did it in order like me and you were doing but we like I don't get to see my brother. I don't get to go over to his place too much, too often, and um, because we both work so so much, so so it, it was in the span of like months that we would have been watching these movies, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably it might have even been like it might have even been over year over years. I can't remember. I know we did that with the Friday the Thirteenth movies, well, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of those. So yeah. So I remember the first time I actually watched this was only recently. I've only seen this now twice. Um, okay. okay. But I remember growing up and obviously knowing about these movies. I remember hearing that the first part one, three, and four I had always heard were the good ones, and then two, five, and six were the bad ones. Well, and then of course New Nightmare. But like as far as the like the original canon movie, yeah, yeah. New Nightmare movie. outside of that. Yeah, I don't. I had always heard growing up that yeah, you you want to watch one, three, and four, but then, and so like I, I maybe that was part of the reason that I had more of a positive. I, I I didn't give this movie a good rating when I watched it because I'd only had it at I think I only had it at three, three out of five, and I I brought that down. I brought my rating down to a two because there are there are a few things in this movie that I do like, and it's not terrible. From what I remember, it's not like the terribleness of part six, but it, yeah. yeah, so I, I brought my rating down, but I do remember liking it a little bit more uh, on my first watch. I do remember I, it was probably the uh, bug kill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I watched it for the, the first time. Kill. We got being like, the effects. the effects in this yeah. movie are definitely still good. Um, 
I think they are the practical effects and Freddie cool. looks good. Yeah. Freddie's makeup is still Kevin uh, Jagger doing the makeup, but he's not the one applying it in this one. It's uh, another guy named Howard Berger and they were ta- uh, <laughs> the makeup still looks great. I think it looks mm-hmm. pr- pretty darn good even compared to part three and two. Um, you have um, John Carl Buchler doing the, the pizza effect. And I think he directed, if I'm not mistaken, he directed one of the Friday the 13th. I think it's a, uh, New Blood, the one where they have the really good special okay. effects, because obviously Buchler, um, R.I.P., he was a special effects guy, right? And they finally, he directed, mm-hmm. I think, uh, Friday the 13th, The New Blood. That's the one where it's Carrie meets Carrie versus Jason. Versus that one was Jason. awesome. Yeah, but yeah. it had, it had, that it one had was... good practical effects, because it's him, right? And he gave yeah. Jason all like the visible battle wounds that he'd ever incurred over all these movies, right? It, so he did the oh, effects cool, on this, yeah. and he directed, I think, that in the same year, which is pretty damn cool um and the giant the the giant chest scene that's the screaming mad george did that one which is or i I think he did the cockroach scene maybe they all worked on this i can't remember the cockroach scene is nasty i know he worked on that effect with the arms falling and the that scene still grosses me out dude i'll be honest i was like like, the start of it even before she like turns into a cockroach like the even like that snapping of her arms when she's fucking not doing you know, the, uh, weightlifting it's, it's just, just it's just like oh the arms just it's slowly just like, oh. yeah it was that's that's another i uh, glad i didn't see this when i was a kid because that would have warped the fuck out of me yeah that's a scarring that's like a total recall type you know type moment one of those like uncanny images that once you see it it just third boob yeah it just especially as a kid it would scar you you know like how i said how like <laughs> stupid stupid images would scar me as a kid right and yeah just for yeah, some yeah, reason yeah. they would just stick with me that was the way my dumb yeah brain sure. worked but like the the cockroach scene is fantastic the giant uh if you ever seen the behind the scenes when there's people you know when freddy's being defeated at the end of the movie this time by a nursery rhyme love that it's so much better than you know holy water and a proper burial part three that right? is cool that is cool I'm but just... no i like it i like the way they kill them like the effect with the giant chest i just thought the nursery rhyme was stupid like she yeah, she knew this absolutely. her parents her parents told her that <laughs> I, well i knew this nursing when i was a kid Leading into that, that is probably my biggest problem with this movie is that we lose Kristen as the um, as the main character in the final girl, but then we we get Alice. Her name? Alice. Alice. We get uh, Lisa Wilcox's Alice. And again, I know it's a horror movie. I know I'm not looking for freaking Schindler's List type acting in this movie, but. At least, even if you're not the best actor, like the the actors in part three aren't the greatest actors in Dream Warriors, and yet I still liked the characters, right? Yeah. And Lisa Wilcox as Alice, I didn't like the character, and I didn't like her as an actor. I I just thought she was just a lame, lame. Yeah, she's so mousy character. at the beginning, and it does seem like yeah. I know, I know a lot of this can't, you know. Uh, an actor and actress can only like, take it so far, but I think a big problem with this movie too, especially compared to part three, where we were talking about how the, you know, Wes Craven writing the original script for it had a little more time to percolate. You know, he had a little more time to slow cook the story, figure out all the, right. right. And part in part four, um, they did it during a writer's strike. Um, so a lot of the time, ah, I Rennie, did not realize that. the director, Rennie Harlan, um, he's he said, a good director. He's a good director. Deep Lucy. Um, cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. Dire, Dire Two. Keep you going. I like I'm playing Planet Hollywood. That's <laughs> game from my childhood. Yeah, that one's a fun one. Oh, remember, he does. Oh, you remember Planet Hollywood? I do. Yeah. He he pulled yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rennie pulled on a lot of. Uh, he said he pulled on dreams that he had from as a kid, which I'm like, I don't know if I believe him because he's always enthusiastic about these things when he says it. But maybe he was having nightmares because, like, apparently the only reason Bob Shea from New Line hired him for this movie is because he said, oh, he's like a six foot eight Finnish guy. He's probably got lots of energy so he can see the project. Are you through. Six, eight? He's tall. He's like, he said he's like some six foot something big 
Norwegian dude, right? He just said, oh yeah, he's a big guy. He's probably got a lot of energy. He'll be able to see the project through type of thing. And he was right. I mean, and, um, you know, as it's weak as the story is, it yeah, is it is competent. And I, yeah. you know what? I, one of the things I will defend about the movie too, before I get into, um, why I think it's, <laughs> it's just a victim of not having a good story. Right. Like, um, and we can't even like Brian Helgeland was one of the writers. And William Cox, Michael, but it's oh a, no way, really? Yeah, so the, it's not like it's not competent, competent people doing the job. It's just it's such a rush, and also they're pumping these movies out. Like um, one of the guys said, uh, they were doing pickups, and the movie was coming out within weeks. And before they ever started, yeah. one of the special effects guys, I think it was Howard Berger, he said, the tr- the the, uh, the poster's already on the wall, and we haven't even started rolling on the movie yet. And they're already advertising it. And it's like, holy moly. Like, you know. That just shows the uh, popularity, though. Yeah. And, you you know, they pumped it out. And this movie made a lot of money. Like, yeah. I think they upped the budget. And this one had a 13. Now, this would have been probably, like, you would know because you're the, like, you're the expert on this. But, like, this probably do you think this would have been at the peak of Freddy's popularity this one yeah i'd say just i mean it's tough because you know i was not around for the other ones and i didn't get into the you know right, the, right, right. not the but, target demo but just looking at it from a, a historical but perspective I mean, I, like i i would have felt like this i would have felt like this one probably was at the peak and then part 5 probably still did very, very well and then I feel like part six, part six came out, I think, in 1990. I think it's 91. It might be 91, but you're close. 91. You're either close. Because the next movie 91. is 89. So, yeah, I just feel like even though it was a sh- like a shitty movie, like uh, horribleness aside, I feel like people probably by part six were getting fatigued by it. But I think that part three and four, uh, this was the, the peak of Freddy pretty uh popularity yeah to me this is the one-two punch because like after this um they start talking about the show comes out and then part five's out within a year robert engel's got his own 1900 number and you know freddie's got like the nightmare on elm street uh you know fred krueger's greatest hits vinyl and all this stuff so he's really becoming a pop cut and this movie i think it yeah it had a 13 million dollar budget and it made a yeah. lot it made like close to 50 mil so Holy shit! So back it, then, that's huge, and and it that's had a huge. lot of stuff going right because again, we have to put this in perspective. It doesn't mean it's the greatest movie, but coming off of part three, everybody said generally well received. Like it, it was as we talked about in our previous episode, all the great things it had about it, and watching this movie again this time and in such close proximity to Dream Warriors, you can see that they're trying to incorporate some of the same things like even how the movie opens you know with the close up and the little girl yep, with the, shot, the extreme close up they have the music I did like that opening I did like that opening I remember I, I sent you a video or a picture of when yeah. I was uh, rewatching it yeah I forgot how cool this opening was yeah the, the opening's well done and then be, and then you you don't really know who you're watching yet because it's right just our cat and then she calls in the guys and then she has that line where she's the boiler's cold and it's like Again, maybe that's like a callback to part two, how the, the boiler heats up when shit's about to go down. But then right. you have to look at, again, it's 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 just, you know, it's not a great story. How do they revive no. Freddy? Like, I, I flaming That was the is, one thing so st- I, I thought that the first 30 minutes of this movie are just, it's just meandering. Yeah. It's not dull. Like you said, it's, it is fast paced, but it's just like, like the first 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes are like kind of just pointless. It's almost like they're trying to set it up for people who haven't seen the previous one, even though it's yeah, it's got a yeah. folder in the title. Because <laughs> like we know we know whose house it is. Oh, there is like a slight gaff in it too. Did you notice when they're fucking the girls drawing Maybe. the little girls got the uh, the chalk right? When they cut mm-hmm. to the shot of the rain pouring down on it, Freddy's like total skin color, and he's a completely different. They must have done something wrong somewhere, and they had to redo it because the rain hitting. And like erasing all the chalk was a completely different picture of Freddy on the. Oh, I didn't see that. No, I didn't. It was just like a split second thing, but I'm like, oh, that's weird. And also, she says this is his house. I think the little girl says that. I'm like, what? 
it's Nancy's house. He just, I guess maybe in the dream world, that's the place he likes to call home, right? Who knows? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But there, again, it's, I think that's my biggest problem with this movie coming off the high of Dream Warriors. How um, all the Dream Warriors just get murdered. And like, you know, like it was awesome. Kincaid and Joey survived the last one. Also, where's Doctor Neil? Where's Neil? Uh, Doctor Gordon. Miss Neil. Miss Neil. No, what's Miss Neil? Yeah, like where is he? Never even touched upon. Don't you think if these kids actually started dying and he wasn't already dead, do you know what I mean? But I think that's probably mm-hmm. a writing issue as well. It kind of goes back to Franny Harlan also said he wants new faces, so he's bringing in new kids. And that's the thing, like where they kill Kincaid and Joey within the first and. Uh, Kristen, yeah but like they kill all these uh not even legacy characters like i'm talking about or i'm going into uh the new scream movies now but like they don't even kill these legacy characters like it, it would have been cool it would have been cool if they had killed maybe kincaid but it would have been cool if they killed him maybe an hour plus into the movie yeah, actually have it mean something and he goes down like a hero as opposed exactly. to... Exactly. Don't just have him like just go through the runner of like, we're going to kill him, then we're going to kill him, and then we're going to kill Kristen, and then we're just going to get into the new characters now and then start killing them. Yeah. I'll give you this. Like, Kincaid is one of my favorite characters in Part 3, and he's still... Um, the brief amount of time he has in this movie is freaking cool for the amount of time. Like I like that even though the dream is nonsensical... And then the dog pisses mm-hmm. fire, and that somehow brings Freddy back. It doesn't make any goddamn yeah. sense at all. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But I like that. It, even though he's dead within, like, what? What's the note? I have this down here. Um, yeah, t- fifteen minutes into this movie, Kincaid's falling asleep, <laughs> and I'm like, this is not good for this character going into it this no. time, right? And it's, no, and I thought, I, I know, thought it was kind of lazy too. I thought it was kind of lazy too that they had him at the junkyard. Yeah, it was it was the same junkyard. Coincidentally, they shot it in the same one where they did the scene it, where they buried him. And that just for me, that just seemed like cheap, like them cutting corners almost. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I thought that while rewatching it, I I would have liked him if it, like even if you're gonna kill him off in the first fifteen minutes, at least have him go out like in a boxing ring or some shit, like <laughs> something. Yeah, well, I guess uh, I guess if we do boxing ring, then we're getting into really silly uh, Freddy territory. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Later on in the movie, we have Freddy and uh, the karate match. So, yeah, oh, like not even a boxing ring. I just just have him go out better than the the junkyard. Just seemed very lazy to me. Yeah, I liked how they gave him the like at least a little bit. Like Joey just dies. Kristen pretty much doesn't <laughs> get in anything. And I was reading no, some YouTube comments true. about it, and I was like, you know what, this is a shitty way to go down, but it could have been shittier. Like, at least he does get that fucking hit on him, right? He throws the car on him, and he has that moment that I will cite that is probably, when I was a kid, I probably got in a lot of trouble for seeing this movie, because I had it on VHS. And when Kincaid throws the car on him, and he gives you <laughs> the fucking line, you know the one. I, I'd read oh, yeah. that one. Uh, all the fucking time at school. Hit drops the drops the car on Freddy and hits him with the Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Take that motherfucker And then he dies. <laughs> but it's just like take that motherfucker is like That's at least okay, I will give you that. It Okay, at least he has that you're right. But it's not like a moment where it's like and then Freddy almost kind of coddles him as he's stabbing him too, eh? Like he rests his head on his yeah. shoulder. Like it's like almost like he kind of respected Kincaid because it's not like Kincaid beat the shit out of him, but his dream power is supposed to be that he's like physically strong, right? Strong so I thought it was, I th- yeah. So I guess he didn't really give the Dream Warriors a chance to get together, but like then just Joey and and Kristen die, and it's just like okay, this movie's going off the rails. And then you, you start to introduce the other characters where it's just, now it's not about... Just, they're all super lame. Yeah. Like, I just, just don't like any of these new... And speaking of bad acting, like, I well, it's, I have to look up who the um, the actor, the karate guy. Andrus Jones. 
Andros. He's just terrible. Andros. He's just terrible. Yeah, that's like a that, that's karate kid type. Um... That whole scene is just and like there there were silly scenes in Dream Warriors, uh, but they they still it, I I don't know within the within the context of the um, within the context of the movie they they were they worked and yeah. I just did not find. Like I, one of the silliest parts of part three for me, I I mentioned this in our last episode was that the yeah dungeons dun, yeah, dungeons and dragons uh, part was yeah that guy that's a little silly but it still worked for me yeah it's and it still works for that character exactly whereas it's set up the uh, kung the kung fu part and the just fighting and taunting Freddy's uh, glove and the ghost Freddy or the invisible Freddy and just, that whole scene for me just doesn't work. It's the just warrior and leave no eyes. Yeah, it's super cheesy. <laughs> Apparently, they ran out of budget and or time because originally he was supposed to die in that elevator. He was supposed to turn into like the elevator from hell, and the floor gives out and he falls into the. See, and that would be cool and scary, yeah. but and. That's kind of going with the rest of the characters in this movie, too. This is where they start to turn it into, um, like, by part five, you have the comic book guy, and he gets sucked into the comic book. This one, you have the karate guy. Again, this... It's cool looking, but it's just not yeah. what I want for a nightmare movie. I want to be, I want the uh, the scariness of, even though they, they joke and have um, the character in uh, part three, wants to be an actress they have her looking at the interview and you see freddie on the interview chair and he says the whatever but it's still pretty creepy and scary when he just comes out of the tv and says well welcome to prime time bitch and shoves her head into the tv right that's still, yeah yeah it's like as yeah yeah as that liner but it's still creepy it's still you're still dying immediately it's, yeah and it's not it's not as silly as this long drawn out drawn out scene of like Fighting him, in, fighting him in a dojo, a karate dojo, and yeah, the line, and just, just silly, just silly. Yeah, a lot of the characters in this movie, right, you get to, she doesn't like the bug, and we've already talked about, like, how good that effect is, and the one girl has asthma, and so she, but like. That makes the movie, that literally the, uh, the cro- cockroach scene makes the movie. Yeah, and the, the good about this movie is, too, like, even the, like, the effects are really good. Um, they are, yep. Robert Angle is still good. I'd say the cinematography is good. Uh, his name was what the hell? I have it written down. Stephen Fireberg, but he was like talking about. Uh, Stephen Fireberg was talking about this movie, and he said, in terms of the money, he's like, "Oh yeah, the effects got everything." Like uh, for like Wait, terms okay. of budget, you know what it does. It does show, but um... or maybe that was, uh, you know what? Maybe that's. What they talked about in part three as well, because I remember that was I think that was actually Roy Wagner. Steven Fireberg was one who said like a lot of this movie was just made up on the fly. Because and that <laughs> ties into like they were talking about it like literally they'd come to set and they had to like figure out a whole scene. And it's just like it, Rennie Harlan like recalls the story and he's like Yeah, so we're uh, in Freddy's house and it's scary and Kristen's there and then the rest of the scene they just figure out as they go. And so they were pulling Rennie Harlan said they were just pulling from nightmares. Cast and crew were like coming up with shit on the fly because they're, you know, the the writer strike was going on. I believe that. And yeah, yeah they, I believe that totally. You can totally like I didn't realize this, and that's why I like that you like you do the the research for these movies because then it's surprising to me when I because I don't I don't look up the uh, the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Oh yeah, you get lost. I just go by what I what I know. But I know, but it's cool you do that because then when you bring these. Uh, this info for me i'm hearing it for the first time so like that's cool and that makes a lot of sense that there would have been a writer strike because you can tell you can tell that this movie could have been excellent yeah it could have been a five-star movie like part three and had so much potential. but yeah if there's but if there was a writer strike that makes sense that 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 gives it leeway more into it is a pretty stylish movie. Like we can, I think we it can is. give it that. And it is, like I said, it's com- competently made. And yeah, you know, like you can just tell now. Now, now you saying that I'm being like, okay, yep, that makes sense. That I, I believe that, yeah, this could have been better if there wasn't a writer strike going on because uh, it's the same thing with uh, Quantum of Solace, the second Daniel Craig Bond movie. There was a writer strike going on there too, and it just, it just seemed like a movie that's. Ru- not rushed, but um, 
doesn't just, live yeah. up to its full potential or something. Exactly. In terms of writing, in yeah. terms of writing. So you're like, that's where, that's where everything comes from. Right. Like if you have a good script, mm-hmm. it's nobody sets out to like, we're going to make this bad script. Right. <laughs> There's so much. We're not yeah, going to try. Exactly. And you know what? Like, Tommy Wiseau, he wrote the room with the full intention of standing on that stage winning uh, best screenplay at the Oscars. He wrote that. Did he actually? He wrote, uh, Are you pulling my leg here? Probably. I mean, I, I, in I, his no, mind. I mean, like his mind. In his mind, in Tommy Wiseau's That's mind, me undies and <laughs> all those lines from that movie. <laughs> he thought, you know what? This is going to be it. This is going to get me that Oscar. This is going to get me that Oscar. Oh my god. Some some funny things I thought about this movie. Um, the DOP said it one time too. They did this kind of like in the Hong Kong style, lots of quick cuts and different angles and stuff. I think the movie is like when you're if you visually just look at it, it's pretty good. Um, looks nice. Yes, um, definitely. The soundtrack obviously has a little bit more of a, a budget, as you can tell. We have what Sinead O'Connor, you have Billy Idol. Um, you had that. That song that plays when the guys run Rick's training karate in the garage. And when I was a kid, I had this. Okay, you got to remember, I was like ten or whatever, maybe eight, and I had this movie on VHS. And I would, I, mm-hmm. I love. I, for some reason, it was just like, oh, he's the guy who's gonna beat Freddy in my as a kid. He's gonna beat Freddy mm-hmm. up. I literally thought this, and then I would like slow mo the VHS. And like do the karate alongside him in my grandmother's basement. <laughs> that's awesome. And the the music was so cool. And then I finally found out that song. And like years later, I played guitar and I learned that song. I was like, oh, I remember that scene. And then you go back and watch like the actual like fight scene and all that stuff. And you're like, oh god, oh boy. But it, the song was drama rama. Anything, anything. That's that's a fun little romp. Like the soundtrack's pretty good. I mean. Um, the music that was written for the oh, movie itself, it's not Battle of Menti, though. Yeah, the one thing I will say that I like, I I did look up about this movie before, or yeah, before our recording, is that uh, I love that uh, Will Smith wrote A Nightmare on My Street for to be in this movie. Why was it? And they good? said nope. I wonder why. Yeah, they, they uh, the producer it. said, no. which I I. I thought you'd think it's it would have been pretty funny to have it in the uh, end credits. Well, they have um, Go West, Don't Be Afraid of Your Dreams, and they also have the Fat Boys, Are You Ready for Freddy? It's weird they that they didn't went, accept. When instead, I thought of that. I thought of the uh, Will Smith song when I was watching it, and that's when I looked it up. That that was the, uh, the, the one research that I did for this movie because <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, I remember. Like, I always remember that song, too, when I was growing up. And it's such a good, it is such a good song and uh yeah he he wrote it for the for to be included on the soundtrack of this movie and they said nope yeah that's kind of which is kind of funny kind of funny and weird nightmare on my street great song yeah i've heard that yeah i heard that on the radio not too long ago it's it's funny though because like yeah you have the Sinead o'connor you can tell that new line's making making bank now i think even bob shay like he had to be convinced to use that song and then they used it like wow multiple times in the movie because he's like her rate was probably pretty high or something you know he was just a, mm-hmm. always very money minded and hearing that story it's like no we really Bob it's like really popular song right now she's hot as an artist if you put it in there it'll really <laughs> he's like if I have to <laughs> so they put it in when she's like doing the training I think it's when the, just before the yeah. cockroach scene and then it plays at the again at the water fountain at the end <sighs> Also, I think it, it'd be we'd go remiss without talking about um, how it's just unexplained. But when all the Dream Warriors die, all the powers go to Alice, and all she gets all the powers in this movie. I guess she gets the the power from Kristen because now apparently this just applies to everybody in this world. I guess, but <laughs> Dream Warriors are supposed to be the end of the Elm Street kids, right? He says it when he kills Kristen yeah. in this movie. The last of the Elm Street brats. But the problem I have, just story wise, and I'm not saying I'm expecting high art from a nightmare on Elm Street, but at least when we no, watch part three, but... there's, a, there's a story and you and the characters are actually going through something that's not just a man with razor gloves coming to get you. He's the mm-hmm. underlying portion of the movie where, you know, 
when shit does hit the fan. They're already in a dire situation. Yeah. This this movie's just cannon fodder with kids who you get to know just enough about them so Freddy can mess with them in that particular fashion. And speaking whole- of messing messing with them, I do like that scene. Uh, like it, it coincides with the cockroach scene, but I do love that at the end where uh, I forget the character's name uh, goes to pick um, Alice up. You mean Dan, Dan Alice is, up from, the, from the diner yeah. and, and they go through that uh, groundhog day where they, they just relive the same scene. And she says, she she has that moment where she says, Oh my God, he's messing with us. He's we're asleep. He's killing yeah. her. He's going to get, Debbie. We're asleep. We're killing her. I thought that was cool. I, I remember thinking that was cool when I first saw it, and I thought that was cool the second time I watched it too. I was like, oh, I wish the whole movie was. I big. agree with. I agree with you. That's like actually one of the better in terms of like up to being part four, right? We know part two doesn't mess a lot with the dream and that type of thing, but mm-hmm. part three is having that whole time. deja vu, having that vu kind of like the dream, like because dreams don't last long in real life. They, I. I can't remember but they don't remember or don't remember they don't last that long <laughs> yeah it's true. and just for the fact that they they relive that scene and then she she clues in and she says i thought that was the pro- like one of the coolest parts of this movie and i i wish the entire movie had that momentum and that like yeah thoughtfulness right because like the realization that you're exactly. in a dream like the only the only exactly. real tricks freddie can pull on people now especially even not just the um the characters in the movie because the audience is smarter than the characters is that yeah. the only trick the filmmakers can pull on us is through filmmaking techniques, right? And story and how they tell exactly. the story. And that was such a beautiful realization. I'm like, okay, that's what a nightmare on Elm street needs to be. <laughs> and like, yeah. And having, if so like, again, if they have better like characters or like new, yeah. Yeah. Like, so scenes like that are new to the, like it, it just really worked for me. And yeah. And, yeah. and um, the soundtrack I don't think was as tight as this one, not because um I think the guy who did the music no. was Craig Safin or Safan or something. He's done a lot of other stuff. But like them adding like the, the Charles Bernstein, the piano piece with like the in the like the, the dojo and it has that like mm-hmm. humorous aspect to it. And I think that goes in with definitely probably to the director because Rennie Harlan says he was trying to because Freddy Krueger is becoming a pop icon at this point. He's like, eh, we're going to treat him as though he's like James Bond. And so he gets the sunglasses and he gets the glove as, you know, that shot where the claws come out of the water. And he's got the sunglasses on and gets that like heroic close-up shot on him, right? Where he's laughing on the beach. He's So this right, is where right, right. I think this is, <laughs> and I know uh, Chuck Russell said it from Dream Warriors. He's like, the tone of this movie is hard to get right moving forward and Mm -hmm. this is where i think it went too far in that direction and it's tough to be afraid of somebody you're almost like as the audience member we're starting to root for him i no longer when i when i met these kids in this movie i wasn't saying oh god i hope he doesn't get them (laughs) i'm like i'm I'm like okay how's he gonna get this you know what i mean um yeah and i think that's not uh, survive it's it's yeah. It's not survive. Go on, guys. Survive. It's, oh, how, I wonder how he's going to kill that one. And you know right away when the guy does karate and stuff, and you're just, this is not set yeah. up in an inconspicuous way. She's doing the dishes, and then it just cuts to a freaking training montage with a hundred cuts in like 10 seconds. You know, super stylized. That's what the, you know, that's what his style of shooting was at the time or what he was inspired by. So I guess it works for this type of movie because. Like Robert Englund said, it was the MTV nightmare. Unfortunately, the MTV nightmare just has a very short-term memory, and they don't remember that, <laughs> you know, what happened in the last movie or any of the like. I guess yeah, I'm going on a I little do bit like, of a tirade, but no, I do like that you brought up the uh, James Bond thing too, because I find it funny you uh, just diverging into Friday the Thirteenth. But I love that they did that in my favorite Friday the Thirteenth movie, Part Six, Part yeah. Four. But is it? Part six? Ah. That's when he gets struck by the lightning, right? The metal pole? That's just, uh, part, Okay. Yeah. So, wow, part six. I thought it was an earlier one. Yeah. I'm sorry for all our listeners. I am not a big horror fan, so please oh, don't come at me. They're going to flame you. Flame them. No, I am them. I am a big horror fan, but I'm, I'm a newer horror fan, so please don't come at me. But, yeah, part six is my favorite Friday film, and that would be the one where he has the James Bond opening, for, uh, Jason. Yes. Yeah. With the slash and the blood yeah. and the... And then he walks, he does the actual gun barrel. Like he walks the... Yep. 
Uh, that yeah, one's like that one's perfect. Yeah, that one's one of the best Fridays for sure. When Tommy Jarvis Bye, comes back, one. so good. Dick. Yeah, Jason. Dick. Dick. I can't remember who directed Part <laughs> Six. I think it's Tom something, but oh, we'll have to. You know what? We should do. We should do the Friday movies uh, next summer. Oh God, yeah, that would be a big commitment too. Holy moly! It would be. We maybe start in May and then uh, go from there. I do like Jason. But uh, yeah, well, guess what? Anyway, I guess we'll. Anyway, sorry. Topic there. Yeah, I was good. I was going on a tirade about how this the movie makes no sense, but I still like. I generally tolerate it, although my score of it went down. I still think it's. Oh, yours did too. Okay. Yeah, like before, I had it ranked a bit higher, and I think I have it like as a. It's a two point five out of five for me right now. Like I think okay. it's, it's 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 a. It squeaks by because it's competently made, but it. The story just it and it the story just ugh. it's just the story and then the the first half killing off the main characters just to kill them off to introduce the new characters who no one cares about like it's just it's it, it teeters on being a bad film but it you're right it is competently made there's the cockroach scene the scene I mentioned which is part of the cockroach scene like the the where they're dreaming. I even we haven't talked about it yet, but I do like the uh, suck face death as well. Yeah, the girl with the asthma. Yeah, that's a cool, uh, a cool. Effect. I actually thought that was kind of pretty, um, pretty scary and 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 nightmare esque. That would it, it, it was uh, it it worked for me. Yeah, I liked it too. It's uh, one of the more simple mm-hmm. ones in the movie. Taste when he uh, like kisses her and then like that like that's pretty horrifying. He's sucking the life out of her. It's, like, such a good, like, it actually, yeah. It, it at least it didn't involve, like, even the other characters having interests, and that's how Freddy gets them. But, like, the part to me that didn't really make sense was when Kristen dies, and this is, I think, where I was trying to go before, but now I've just kind of roundabout got back to it. Um, when Kristen dies, she sends the bolt of energy to um, Alice's character, right? And Alice is like right. really mousy, and this is the beginning of the movie where she's like very, you know, shy and can't really doesn't talk a lot. And Ugh. then she gets the power of Kristen, who's able to bring people into her dreams. But why does she get all of her other friends' powers as they begin to die? I never understood that. Like the Dream Master, she talks about it's it being a nursery doesn't. rhyme, and she says that's a nursery rhyme. I was told when I was a kid or something. And it helps right. us. It was like a way like, oh, well, if you know you're in control of your dreams, you are the one who's in charge, right? But how does that make sense when the cockroach, like Debbie dies, and then she gets her thing, and she accumulates like the karate, like she does like the nunchuck training in her bedroom after yeah. her, her brother dies. And it's just obviously somebody oh. in a wig. And they bring even, they yeah. like it's not even just visually, like, okay, <laughs> It's kind of a cool idea to have, like, a, you know, the final girl start off weak, vulnerable, and by the end of it, kick some ass. That's cool. But Mm -hmm. the way way he almost, (laughs) he doesn't, it's almost like they don't have faith in the storytelling, or, like, it's really coming together in the editing room or on the day of shooting, because how many times does the general audience need to be told that she's accumulating these powers? Like, exactly. oh, okay, I... (laughs) somebody died and it's like after the dream warriors die and it starts within like the first 15 minutes of this movie i think minute 23 two out of the three of them are dead and now and uh you know Kristen's about to die after that it's just all these new characters who you got to know intermittently for the first 15 or 20 minutes of the movie are already beginning to die and then she starts taking the pictures off of the of her mirror right and then her brother dies and she's doing kung fu uh, she's doing the nunchucks with the same music he was training with and then she starts smoking cigarettes like Kristen was. and uh, She never had a, a scene in a waterbed, though, like Joey, and it would be like some honky dude come out or something like that. That was weird. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Rod Easton says that in like behind the scenes uh, of that Never Sleep Again when he goes, you know, I really appreciated how my death scene, you know, at the hands of a beautiful naked woman. It's always my weakness. I'm like, uh, at least he had fun. You know what I mean? That guy, what a, like, uh, a very small... Uh, role in that movie and i think oh yeah <laughs> for both those characters i mean all the char- returning characters except robert england really were kind of small returning roles but 
Yeah, the whole um, the repetition of her accumulating these powers. I guess she's the that's what the Dream Master is, and then she says the nurse arrived, I mean, and that's how they defeat him. I think is. Uh, I get it uh, visually. I think Rennie Harlan said, you know, he they thought of every single way that monsters are defeated in these movies, um, and I guess the souls coming out and seeking revenge is kind of cool concept and visually they did a good job showing it it's just it doesn't really resonate to me with like the rest of the uh, <laughs> you know the previous lore and mythos of freddy and dreams it's like we've established he does have souls in his body but where did this nursery rhyme come from and all she has to show him is this reflection and recant these words it's like almost evil dead types of cheesy and now i've rhymed these words three bibbidi bobbidi b and freddy just you know blows up into flames or something yeah like the power of christ compels you the power of christ compels. it's just that this weird kind of chant like rhyming just to get him yeah to get freddy on like it just doesn't work as well as part three again where part three is badass yeah where nancy and uh Kristen are working together to to fight freddy yeah whereas in this one it's just like yeah a fucking rhyme really and dip and uh, the whole like uh, Alice in Wonderland, and it's just the the showdown in the yeah, church. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, and that's just lame too. The, the but... showdown in the church with like the, the shot between his legs, and it's like he's like a gunslinger and stuff. And like, there's I get like, he's kind of go for like the cooler imagery, but it just like to me that doesn't. That's the parts that don't ring true. Whereas like in part three, yeah. Freddy is is borderline funny. He's like, you know, he's yep. he's he he knows pop culture, but he's not. Um, He's not gonna, you know, monologue on your ass before he uh, he gets you. Like in this one, it's cat and mouse, and some of the scenes, like the cockroach scene, it's so extended. I mean, it is great, but also like, like you said, like the karate scene, that the cat and mouse game is just dragged out so long. Like Freddy can just, you know, turn your hands so, into hot dogs and barbecue you instantly. Like it's one of those and things. Even, yeah, even it's... going back to even going back to the original, where like the first scene in the original with Tina. Yeah. Like that was, it's just so terrifying when you see him and he, uh, like the stretched out arm and yes, yeah. like by this point now we have him doing karate. So it's getting into, it's getting into the badness of five and six. Yeah. It's, it's not there yet, it's, it's, it's leading. but it's getting there. It's getting there. Cause you have the, you have the suck face, which is, yeah, it's jokey. Kind of like the, uh, welcome to primetime bitch. And, uh, that one offends it, me the it's, least it's, out of out of all of them. And the roach scene in this movie, I think those are like the two. Um, yeah, yeah. Better. Like the let's suck face is actually creepy. The obviously the roach scene is terrifying as fuck. But um, the water so scene it's, was it's, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, apparently it was a tough uh, thing to shoot because they had like a whole thing underneath set up on the like a, a stage or whatever. So it was like a pool underneath. Okay. So they built it up on risers. Which makes sense to have like somebody come in that from does. underneath, right? Yeah. But like it seems just um, again, like even if it was a cool visual of somebody coming up from your waterbed, like the whole he's he gets killed there, not much, not much of a fight at all, and then his mother finds exactly. him in the waterbed. When does that happen in the series? What? I mean, <laughs> you, you do have the time when in part one, where this is where the kills and like the representation of the kills in each movie just this is, this is i'm sure this is one of the re reasons why Wes craven originally said i don't know how to fucking do a sequel to this shit because every movie it changes yeah. sometimes like per, for instance in the same movie so this is just microscopic i'm not gonna think about the whole franchise here but the scene where um i just said where joey dies his mother finds his body mm -hmm. inside the waterbed okay one that's a pretty neat trick by fred but two Kincaid dies before him. How does Kincaid die? You don't see the blood coming out of his shirt. He literally just like grabs his chest and he's like, "Oh, so Freddy yep. like is Freddy scaring you so bad in your dream that you just die for real from scared or is like he inflicting that on you and you because he th you think he killed you, you die?" But then how does that make sense even when you look at it where Johnny Depp and the blood all over and the parents see that, right? I don't know. Oh That's a God. completely different yeah. movie, so we won't go into it, but like you know, Dream Warriors even plays that aspect. No, it how, makes sense. how did the TV star get her head smashed into the TV in a real world perspective when Larry Fishburne walks into the room and goes, 
oh, that girl's probably just smoking cigarettes and somehow clearly did not, you know, unalive herself in that TV. <laughs> she just, <laughs> what did she do, like a Superman dive? Ya yeet? Yes. Head first into the television? Like, what? No. So, you know, that that's, no, that's kind of like the... Point. Yeah. It's kind of weird how... The, and the house burns down when Kristen dies. Like, some of them... Um, oh, kind some of them, you know, the karate guy just, he dies on the shitter, I guess, right? <laughs> like, he goes to the washroom, and he says to the other guy, hey, and if, if they get me next, man, be careful. And then he goes and dies next. I'm just like, oh my god, this movie and the writing. I just, oh, the writing. The oh, writing. God. But there you go, the lack of writing. The lack of writing. I know. We can't, we can't be too harsh on it. I still, I still like the effects, and there's, Robert Englund's always, uh, enjoyable it's not terrible it's not i still i i would put maybe two ahead of this because i just for all the good things in this movie at least two is its own movie and at least part two tries something different whereas yeah two's flawed as well yeah but yeah i i would put two ahead of this now in my ranking i would agree with that i i think i am often going back to one and three but i think personally right now it's three one two and then this in terms of my ranking um because i think part three just yeah, takes everything too. from the first one and makes it even better it's like the old uh yes the old argument about like yes. alien or aliens i you know i love them both but they're both very different Me too. they're different films but they're good for different reasons as well Right, it's like tough yep, to say. Absolutely. Oh, I like aliens better. I mean, alien. I would say alien over aliens, but I, I genuinely love aliens, and I just rewatched those uh, in the last five months in preparation for uh, Romulus. And but I agree, like I, I like one, but if anyone's like, I don't, don't argue. Yeah, because if anyone tells me they like part one, if they say Resurrections sure. better than Alien, then we know we have a problem in the conversation. Like then I'm sure, I'm sure it's just... somebody's favorite movie out there, but it's like it's got to be in like well, an ironic way. Or Ron, Ron <laughs> Perlman, maybe. Or <laughs> yeah, it's true. I wonder what Rennie Harlan <laughs> thinks about <laughs> Nightmare Four. I wonder what. He ah, thinks. that's interesting. Yeah. Well, he showed up. So going back to Alien Resurrection, I remember. I remember my brother renting Alien Resurrection, and I wasn't allowed to watch it because I was a kid, and I was so jealous because I hadn't watched any of the Alien movies at this point. But I remember my brother renting Alien Resurrection, and I remember when it came in theaters, I really wanted to see it, and I wasn't allowed. And then I finally saw it when I bought the collection, and I thought, "Oh wow, okay, this sucks." <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's so I disappointing. Dodged a bullet there, even as even as a kid, I dodged a bullet there. That one was fairly disappointing. <laughs> they went on <laughs> going off topic. But... Yeah, they went on different paths. I mean, this one feels like a a little bit of a letdown compared to part three, but we haven't stooped to the lows that I think the series is about to go. No, very um, true. At least at least it has it has those moments that you don't find in. Well, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about part five, and there is maybe one. One moment in part five that I that has always stayed with me, but we'll get to that when we talk about part five. But yeah, at least it, it doesn't get to the moments of part six. It doesn't get to the ridiculousness of part six or the shittiness of part six, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And like the, even the title for part five, like, okay, you, you have one movie, <laughs> Dream Warriors. We have part four. The Dream Master. We have Part Five, The Dream Child. Like, why isn't Part Six called? You know, bring in, uh, uh, bring in the, what's that band? Dream who who does the song Dream Police. You know, at this point we might as well just oh, uh, Cheap Trick, Cheap Trick. Yeah, bring in Cheap Trick and and they'll do the soundtrack. It'll be like Dream Warriors, but you know they'll be the Dream Police and they'll they'll be the ones that to you know the Dream ready. Police. Oh my know. god, it's just it's stupid, right? Because like. The audience the doesn't. Grandparents. You don't need dream in the title anymore. The, the, the dream the, for an exchange student. <laughs> the dream within a dream <laughs> marriage. <laughs> that's like that's just yeah. Now we're going down the rabbit hole. But I did have <laughs> something I thought about where like you know how all these um, movies now like these classic movies are having like the Halloween franchise with uh, bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis and it's almost like a legacy sequel. With the Star Wars movies as well, you bring back all these characters. I was thinking, yeah, this would 
if they did it nowadays, and I know Robert Engel was too old, and he said he would never come back to do Freddy again. I don't even think he should, to be honest. But am I? Well, mar- the last time he played him was on the Goldbergs, I think, right? Yeah. 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 And Which I, I haven't seen that scene, but that that show looked pretty funny. I don't like sitcoms and I or modern sitcoms, I should say. But I mean, the Goldbergs was one of the ones that when I lived at home, my mom would be watching it, and I would watch it over, like just watching it and be like, "Oh, this isn't bad." So I think it'd be kind of cool to watch that episode, whatever episode he came back as uh, Freddy for. Yeah, he just shows up, and he's. You can tell he's a bit bigger now because he's older. <laughs> he doesn't have that. Oh, really? Is, so you have seen it? I've just seen like the clips. Like I've you there. It's out there on YouTube. Just some of those like scenes yeah. kind of spliced up. Like just when he's saying some of the lines, he, he's not as he he doesn't seem to be moving as much in the shots. But I like uh, it was just like I, so. I don't think he has it. I mean, he said he doesn't want to play the role again. But for me, it's just like in a dream scenario. You know, for, for me. And after watching this movie, and I think this is where they start to deviate to the point where I don't find them scary and good stories anymore. I just find them entertaining and and sometimes yeah. um, just fun, you know? I don't think he ever really gets scary again until New Nightmare. New after, Nightmare, and absolutely. I, and yeah. uh, even though <laughs> the, I think they said in part five they were trying to make him scary again. I was like... Yeah, okay. But I think this is if I could go back in time or Dream Sitter, you know what I mean? This was an idea I had the other night. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if they did a legacy sequel and it it does the same thing, the choose your own adventure, like the Halloween franchise, but it takes place years after Dream Warriors and you bring back Doctor uh Doctor Neil or whatever. Oh, okay. You bring Doctor Gordon and you bring back you could have Nancy in there some way. You know what I mean? Dream Ghost, right. who helps the kids, like we talked about That's once the before. Thing, though. I, th- I just think it, that after New Nightmare, they didn't need to do another one. I, I, you know what? I honestly agree. Like the only reason I think like, they ever did it was because just the money. They, just, they know people love Freddy. Well, well like, and that's the, yeah, that's the thing. And it, well, they tried it with the. Um, God, we should we should maybe record uh, an episode with the uh, Jackie Earl Haley one. <sighs> Well, <laughs> we, are, we are doing the series, so I mean, um, I remember. Well, upon my well, we'd have to do Freddy versus we'd yeah. have to do Freddy versus Jason too, technically. But I mean, I just the Jackie Earl Haley one. I remember kind of being looking like kind of looking forward to it because I thought, oh, you know what? I really like Jackie Earl Haley, and I thought to myself, and again, folks listening, I <laughs> was late to the party with a lot of horror movies, so. I thought to myself when that when that was advertised, I thought, you know what, that looks pretty good. I, and then I the finally trailers, saw it and was like, oh, that was. One of the trailers was like really good, and I remember I remember it made me want to watch the movie. And then one of the other trailers. Okay, was so like as a, as a longtime fan, as a as, as someone who saw them as a kid, that's cool that you actually would say that because yeah, I thought the trailer. I thought it looked good, and then yeah. I saw it, and I was—I I, we didn't see it in theaters. I ended up uh, watching it with my brother. We rented it, and yeah, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, I—I I, honestly, we should we should do it because I have such faint memories of it, and it was around the time when I was like, I, I have faint memories of it too. Hurt. Honestly, I, I've only seen it the one time, so I would uh, I would be up for doing that. But that's the shitty thing is that we would have to do it after New Nightmare if I know. we're going in order, right? I know. Well, I guess no, no, no. Okay, you know what? We would have to do it after Freddy vs. Jason, so... Yeah, you have the High of New Nightmare, then you have Freddy vs. Jason, and then... Okay. And then, uh, no, yeah, I'd be down. I'd be down. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It would be cool if they maybe did something with bringing back, or just casting a new Freddy. See, like, how would you bring back these characters if I Freddy's just, not I the same, right? You can't, I, you can't do it. It's just not like James Bond. It's not like James Bond, and, it, and it's not like Jason. Where Jason, of course you can recast Jason... Because Jason, uh, he doesn't talk. Don't he doesn't have Kane the Freddy Hodder. personality. For you. Kane Hodder will choke <laughs> you out if he finds out you said this to him. He'll take a picture with you. It'd be a lovely man. And then he'll choke <laughs> you a little bit because you said that. I just think Jason's interchangeable. For me. Yeah, he's a, he's Michael a guy Myers behind to a mouth. certain extent. Exactly. Michael Myers, to a certain extent, is interchangeable to me. I've mentioned, I think, in one of our uh, Nightmare podcasts that i did i noticed a difference between 
uh, one and two. Yeah. Yeah. Of Michael Myers and the walk. And yeah, so there, there is a certain amount of, there's nuances that to, is involved to it all nuances, but I just, buddy, it's just, it's Re- It's Robert England. And I don't think the part can be recast. And I, I, again, people say, uh, like, Oh, when Heath Ledger was cast as Joker, Oh, he's going to be shitty. Yeah. And then he blew it out. Like he knocked it out of the park. And, what came as Joker? Like you have different variations of Joker, right? And I think, okay, maybe, maybe someone could play Freddy, but I don't like at this point in time. I'm saying I don't think that. Yeah, I'm standing by that. I think Freddy, I think Freddy Krueger should be just Robert England. They should come and out Jackie with new Earl stories. Haley, they should come out with new stories. Jackie Earl Haley gave it his his best, and he didn't do it, and. There are arguments that yeah he could be, but like I, I just don't think it it can be done. Yeah, I would I would agree. I think if they were ever to do a new story, they would have to cast somebody who is generally unknown, just to have that. Uh, you know, it could be a good actor or something, but somebody well, who's okay. not who's not okay. known to a mainstream so, so audience. I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna recant. You're right. I, I don't think it could be a main or a, a big actor. But I don't think it's You're necessary right. it's- either. Like what you were saying as well. Like I'm kind of on the same boat. Like. I think if they got, you know, desperate enough that the IP of Nightmare on Elm Street's not making any money for a certain amount of time, right? They're going to look at that and say, <clears throat> just from a business perspective, right? That we're, yeah, there's money left on the table. I don't think they will. I honestly don't think they will. After the uh, reactions from fans for the Halloween movies, the... Uh, like Scream has been positive mostly, and I liked I liked the uh, the requels yeah, of Scream. I have too. Uh, from what I've seen, I'm still missing, with, I haven't uh, seen part five, but I need to see five. It's weird. I've seen oh, all of them except five. The one in New York. So stupid. The one Where, in New York. What's the newest one? Is it five or six? I can't even remember. There's I think so it, it was in New York. They just it need was, to start it was calling good. them. It stab. was flawed. It was definitely flawed. Yeah, but it, it, it was, was good. good. It was good. They just need to start calling the Scream movie Stab. Once they get to part ten, screen because that would stab. be hilarious. And then, the, hilarious. and then when they get to part thirty, they'll call it um, <laughs> s- scream, stab, bleeding. I don't know. Dead. Also, about stupid titles. When we were saying the Dream Police earlier, it's almost like uh, Christopher Nolan. If he would have made another Batman movie, maybe he would have went down that route. Whereas, you know, because it was Batman, then it was Batman begin or The Dark Knight. Oh, Batman Begins, Batman, Batman begins, uh, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises. The... Sorry, Batman's always had silly uh, titles because, yeah, remember originally it was Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Yes, and then you have Batman Begins. And I think then... there was originally there was originally supposed to be uh, Batman. Oh, what was the title of it? And Beyond. There was going to be one before. I, I can't remember, but. It was going to be the uh, the second Kilmer movie or the no the, the third Keaton movie. But anyway, we're getting off topic again. Yeah, but. We're, we're, but I think he should have had one more, you know, like the trilogy of the Nightmare films. Yeah, Dream Warriors, Dream Master, um, Dream Child. We had Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Dark Knight something. Leave it, If anybody's <laughs> still listening at this point and we've gone on this awful tangent, leave it, leave an answer. <laughs> Give us the craziest answer you have. Some somebody out there. Also, I think we're pretty much done talking about four, right? Oh yeah, for sure. We got to get on to five right now. Yeah, we. Gotta, well, not right now. Yeah, but uh, very soon. I got to rewatch five, and we got to. Uh, yeah, we got to try and elucidate. And uh, but as far as as far as four goes, we've we've said all we need to say about four. I think. Yeah, I would, clearly as we've gone off on our tangents. I uh. I would agree with that, 100%. Um, anybody out there? Thanks for listening. Oh, you know what? I will. I will say one last thing. Yes. And I've mentioned this in uh, previous podcasts, but four, I think, it uh, came out around this or the the NES game, which I I always will champion the NES game. I think the NES game came out around the same time as four because one of the uh, powers in the video game is that you become a ninja and you have to fight Freddy's glove. There you go. 
And it wasn't until this it wasn't until this rewatch that I was like, oh, okay, that's where the part in the video game came from. So a little bit of art imitating life, imitating the video game is underrated. I will say that. I will always say it's GN. Yes. But it's underrated. I, I don't think I've ever and played that one, to be honest. But I, I did see it as a kid, and I was always when you come over when you come over for our live uh, live recording when you come to my apartment, uh, I'll uh, dig it out. We'll play it. That sounds absolutely lovely. Um, anybody out there still listening? Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> Leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe if you want to hear some more content like this. We're putting it out there. We're keeping it going. See. People seem to be reacting, or some. We got some decent comments out there, some, some views. So if you're out there, you know, make your voice heard. Do you love part four? Do you hate part four? Did we say something uh, terribly inoffensive again? I don't know. I thought this was. We were. Pretty, I probably did. Yeah, we might have pissed somebody off. There's somebody who thinks one of the actors <laughs> who we, or one of the things in this movie that we didn't like, is somebody else's favorite, and we're gonna get caught. It's quite simply... Uh... <laughs> Eventually. It might happen one day. Um, but I like the engagement. It's fun. And people share their experiences about Part 4. Right? And uh, yeah, until next time, man. Uh, Go Part 5. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Peace. Cheers. Take that, motherfucker!